completely variant based on the. Well, how did those work? You just cut all these at the same time. Those are these oh are. Oh God, Matt, why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> Son of a bit. I come get you when the problems are like eight out of ten, not when it's real bad. Matt, this isn't fun anymore. It stopped being fun a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Just to catch you up, Matt, the thing that is the worst problem is they're not getting cross-cut, the length inconsistency. I think we can solve everything but the length inconsistency. See, Matt, I'll show you. Like, mm. Feel well, that? I don't know, what is the tolerance? Like, you can probably 10? see it. 20? Oh, yeah. Like, well, I just think, like, right? that's measured, supposed to be flush. That's a fatal error. Problem. This hasn't happened a ton, yeah. but if the machine is doing this, there's, like, a larger problem somewhere. It's like this is a canary in a coal mine. Maybe it's the parts shifting. I wonder if we should run tests where we're literally clamping the, the parts down. down so that we can at least eliminate shifting as well. Well, yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's clamp the parts and let's just do a clean trim. Yes. Without a tenon, hmm. without anything. Yes. And I'll see. Let's say four of them. And then let's reconvene and see where we're at. Okay. program to cut to length. I ran it, I clamped the fence down, and then I clamped the part down and the part to the other fence. So like I put a clamp like that, yep. and then I put a clamp like that, yep. and then the other clamps are still on there, and the fence was still clamped down. So and I did that for zone one and zone two. Nothing is moving. Other than the cutter. What is the result of that test? I cut four. They are within one or two thousandths of each other. Ding, ding, ding. In indiscernible. As close as you can ever get in woodworking. To the okay, thing. that is actually very like good. Shooting board accuracy. Then I ended that program, unclamped the fence, sent it to eight feet, sent it back to the same exact dimension, ran the same test the same way, Two thousand off. So the fence yep. seems to be repeatable even when it moves and comes back. Okay. So far, all good news. Made a new program, put tenons on, and told it to cut the same length. So this should be the same length, and the tenons are extra yep. twenty thousandths. Ooh. With mm. the same clamps and everything. And these are out of plumb by I'd say maybe one thousandth, which is hey, this fine. It's all probably fine. Within, I feel yeah, that's about within this. like spec. Now this is a lot of progress because we found it's like when you run the straight program, it's perfect. And then when you added the tenon in, it's 20 thousandths off. But the fact that we had to hold everything rigid means there's a problem somewhere else. It's yeah. like it's bumping the fence yeah. or because when we cycled them just carefully placing without all the reinforcement, we well, were getting. That was, the, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was with the tenon program. That wasn't with the straight program. In fact, when we ran the test with the straight program on the small armrests, that was fine. So not to complicate things, because I actually think we're making very good progress, but we don't use the tenon head to bore these holes. No, it's completely separate from those. 
So we do have another issue, like the whole depth still. Yeah. Which Johnny's fixing. Johnny, I think, is fixing. Drilling all the holes. But that's a solvable issue. And solvable issues are what we need right now. What we need is we have to get rid of the, like, we don't know what's wrong. Yeah. We don't even need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of we can't run parts. I don't care if I know what's wrong with the hole depth. If we can run parts, it's just a little extra labor. That's fine. That's mm -hmm. fine for now. Okay, so yeah, let's keep going keep and on. then tomorrow keep if on. we'll just we'll make parts and then we will SUV them to Pennsylvania because we're not gonna make the truck yeah we're not gonna, gonna make the even truck. if we stayed all night I don't think I'm gonna go check prophecy and make sure that's gonna make the truck okay Good luck. thank you thank you man rains it pours <laughs> rains it fucking pours <laughs> That was PA. PA was very good. The corn is very tall. Yeah, they just say? crashed this machine. Oh. Stop. I heard a big bang. Yeah, it's fine now. There's no way it's fine. I trust Dan. No, it's not fine. Can you run a dry cycle on that? Trevor. Oh. Oh. Okay. It won't shut it down because there's, there's nothing in it. How does it know whether there's something in it or not? The light beam sensor, it will reflect light off the wood, hit the beam, it knows something's there. Yeah. Well, it's no longer smashing itself. We're golden. No, nothing to see here. Oh, nothing to see here. Boring. Boring. That's why we're heading to the MT, though. That's why we're going to the MT. <laughs> going to the MT, which is good news. Oh. Very good news. I'll yeah. believe it when I hear it from Jason. No. It, let's... There he is. Hey, hey. Phone. hey. He looks much happier. <laughs> Wait, what? No way. Uh, Here, hold that. Uh, like, Can we like... <laughs> <laughs> Give us the good news on the MC. Hey, so right now, see how that part's clamped in? Yeah. Uh, like usually what you do is when that's machining, you're getting the other one set up in zone three, and it just goes back and forth. It's like twice as fast. It's like no downtime. It's called parallel process. So what happens, when those go down, this whole frame Whoa. is like distorted. Bendy? This fence, yeah. Like shifts backwards. Yeah. Have we put have we put a caliper on that to measure it on the uh, fence? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it for the thing. What we should do is you should film that yeah, dial yeah. indicator yeah. as Brendan clamps right. that part on that side. Right. Yeah. There it is. Whoa. Twenty-five thousand. That was it. So it's like when we're trying to figure out why the hole depths are so inconsistent, well, it changes along the length. Okay, it changes okay. on what parts you have clamped in, how many zones you have clamped in. It's like a stupidly complex problem, which is why it took so long to drill down and figure it out. It flexes, but not to the naked eye. Like you can't yeah. notice, so the operator yeah. loads it, and then that was the inconsistency. I was very thrilled when I discovered this. You discovered it. I discovered not it, people. yeah. <laughs> well, the manufacturer didn't discover it. Oh. This machine was sold to us that it could do parallel processing. Yeah. And when you do parallel processing, it knocks it out of tolerance by approximately a 16th of an inch. What so there it? was a out of square issue, there was a software issue, and now the machine itself was torquing itself out of alignment. And here's what people need to understand. That 20 thousandths, that is a customer complaint. Well, that 20 thousandths is us having to pay to yeah. ship them another New table. table. Yeah. That 20 thousandths is the difference between a profitable wormwood and then out of business wormwood. That 20 thousandths is literally 60 jobs. Like that 20 thousandths, <laughs> it's everything. Yeah, and unfortunately even now, because we can't do parallel processing, this thing's running at like 30, 40% speed. Usually when we're running rails, we have one rail in each zone for each part of the process. Yeah. Now we can only do one rail, run it, wait until it's done, yeah. move it to the next one, run it, wait until it's done. So slow. Yeah. I, I so we gotta least... find a solution for this quick. We wanna be at 75 tables a day. In the current state, I, I don't think we can get much more than 25 a day. You, you think right. about 33% slower than it should be? Yeah. Do you think we deserve a 33% discount on the price? <laughs> <laughs> if they don't fix it, I think we deserve a 100% discount on the price. Ooh, there we go. There it is. Good news is though, no Knowing the problem is 90% of the solution. So yeah. now that we know that that was the ghost in the machine, we're able to make positive progress. We're yeah. actually able to run the plant. We have a couple post-processing steps to make sure and to verify the parts are good. And then once we run that for a while and it's like, oh, all these parts are 100%, then we just check the parts less often. So yeah, it was, we got it. We got it licked. So now we're running legs 100% good today. Later this afternoon, we're gonna get rails going 100% good. And then tomorrow we'll have armrests going 100% good, which will be all of the carcass parts. And then that goes to Pennsylvania. That goes to Pennsylvania. Toppers coming off the other CNC, 100% good. We have oh. all six toppers, so oh. 
Progress. Doing it. Finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Very dark out here. Yeah. How's it going? Good. Hey. Tracker tile. It's the final tracker tile. The final tile dial? Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fucking good looking. Does it click? Not yet. <gasps> not, not right now. For photo assets, we didn't put any magnets in the dials just so it'll be easy for JV to oh. swap them out real quick. Because yeah, so we only have those three. We only have one set. Whoa. That's gonna feel good. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, that's aggressive. Those are wicked shiny. <laughs> Those are very shiny. <laughs> the shine's nice, but you've it, already the like, fingerprints. It, they're already the fingerprints super dirty. Will be a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. I think the Damascus yeah, kind of like that. Ooh, Damascus. <laughs> Stick the Damascus in there. Oh, wow. Ooh, I love how nice. readable that is. That's, very nice. that's what I was gonna say about the gold versus bronze. I feel like the gold's more readable. Like the engraving kind of changes the color a little bit. The bronze, absolute whatever. final ones, I think we're gonna try and get ink numbers. Ooh, oh, the numbers cool. are black. That's nice. Oh, that's for us. Ooh, I think I really like this one though. Yeah. Am I alone? No, I love it. I love it too, but as far as like an overall worm with aesthetic for the the entire line of them, I think the brass is the way to go. You're probably right. I like the silver, but the fingerprints are terrible. Just immediately looks like garbage. Yeah. Those? It'll be like a car. It'll look good when you drive it off the lot. Tracker tiles actually lose 30% of their value as soon as, you, <laughs> as soon as you open the box up. <laughs>